dhihab al haya that your shame goes. Again, another thing which is commonly witnessed. Those people who disobey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala constantly, you say they have no haya. For example, you'll sit here in a lecture, Abu Uwais will be speaking concerning those sisters who are speaking loudly and disrupt, disrupting and, and distracting those people who are around them. And maybe exactly, maybe during the time that he's speaking, they continue to do what they're doing. Why? Because haya is, haya is shame is being lost. Ibn Qayyim says, Zihab al Haya, the loss of shame, or modesty, الذي هو مادة حياة القلب, or which is the substance of the life of the heart, and it is the origin of all good, and the loss of modesty and shame is the loss of all good. As the Prophet وسلم, said, Al Haya khayrun kullu. Modesty and shame is nothing, is all, and nothing but good. Again, Ibn al-Qayyim continues and he mentions another effect from the effects of sinning that a person is deprived of sustenance, meaning risk. From the effects of sinning that you'll find deep, your sustenance, your, 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 the money that you are given will become tight. Maybe once you found yourself Alhamdulillah, with ni'mah, with blessing from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. A state of ease. But due to, you, due to your sinning, you were deprived of sustenance. And Ibn al-Qayyim says, and this is likewise, taqwa of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will bring about risk. And when a person, fatarkut taqwa, when a person leaves off taqwa, it will bring about poverty. It will bring about poverty. And Wallah ibn al-Qayyim, he goes on to mention many points. Again, another point that we'll mention. He said, Hurman al-Ta'a, sinning, again, it hinders a person from obeying Allah. And ibn al-Qayyim said, فَلَوْ لَمْ يَكُنْ لِلزَّمْبَ عُقُوبَ إِلَّا أَنَّهُ يَسُدْ عَنْ طَاعَةٍ تَكُونْ بَدَلَهُ وَيَقْطَعْ تَرِيقْ طَاعَةٍ أُخْرَى فَيَنْقَتِعْ عَلَيْهِ بِالزَّمْ تَرِيقٌ ثَالِثَ ثُمَّ الرَّابِعَ وَهُلُمَّ جَرَّ فتنقطع عنه بالذم طاعات كثيرة كل واحدة منها خيرا له من الدنيا وما عليها وهذا كرجل أكل أكل أوجبت له مرضة طويلة منعته من عدة أكلات أطيب منها والله المستعان meaning that when a person commits a sin and continues to sin and disobey Allah this hinders him from obeying Allah سبحانه وتعالى and Ibn al-Qayyim said if there was only if there was nothing if there was no effect from a sin and no punishment except that it would block a block and prevent a person from obeying Allah then this would be great in itself. Again Ibn al-Qayyim mentioned another effect of sin أن المعاصي تقصر العمر وتمحق بركته ولا بد that sinning it shortens your lifespan. Sinning Shortens the lifespan. And it will remove the blessing from your life. And this is a necessity. And he goes on to mention and explain what is meant by that. Again, another effect of sinning. أَنَّهُ يَنْصَلِخْ مِنَ الْقَلْبِ إِسْتِقْبَاحُهَا فَتَسِيرْ لَهُ عَادَةً فَلَا يَسْتَقْبِحْ مِنْ نَفْسِهِ رُؤْيَةَ النَّاسِ لَهُ كُلِّهِمْ وَلَا كَلَامُهُمْ فِيهِمْ وَهَذَا عِنْدَ أَرْبَابِ الْفُسُوقِ هُوَ غَايَةَ التَّهَتُّكِ وَتَمَامِ اللِّذَّةِ حَتَّى يَفْتَخِرَ أَحَدُهُمْ بِالْمَعْصِيَةِ وَيُحَدِّثْ بِهَا مَنْ لَمْ يَعْلَمْ أَنَّهُ عَمِلَهَا وَيَقُولْ يَا فُلَانْ عَمِلْتُ كَذَا وَكَذَا Look at this. From the effect of sinning, again something which is common amongst the fusaq, the mujrimun. He said, that when a person, from the effects of sinning, that sinning and disobedience, it removes from the heart, it removes what? It removes the quality, and this is an important quality, the quality, for example, 
of hating and deeming to be evil and deeming to be repugnant and filthy and low and miserly meaning if you sin it will remove this from the heart and then a sin will be something which is good and something which is normal so therefore he explained the sin therefore it will become accustomed to him and he will not even hate that the people see him doing this thing and that's how it starts first of all you sin in private and it continues and continues let's take the example of the fornicator because he is one of the most filthy individuals the fornicator sins in private fornicates, fornicates, fornicates so much so openly starts to fornicate he doesn't care if the people see him he doesn't care if the people speak concerning him and Ibn al-Qayyim goes on to say so much so you see some of them boasting and wallahi even we hear about people boasting about filthy activities that they do so much so that one of them will boast about his sin and he will tell people who do not know what he done and he will say oh fulan oh so and so verily I done this and that and Ibn al-Qayyim said this type of person will not be forgiven and the door of Tawbah will be shut upon him there's no Tawbah, the door of Tawbah will shut from this person and that's why it's destruction and Wallah sometimes you wonder one time you, maybe you see a brother in the masjid and then you never see the brother again one time the brother he's on mashallah he's going to lectures with you he's riding in the car with you you're talking about this issue of hadith this issue of fiqh next minute he's on the corner with the drug dealers brother goes to Medina mashallah sits in the circles of the scholars comes back to the to the west non fornicate why because of this because sinning and when, when people get accustomed to it it becomes a custom then you speak about it, you boast about it you don't care and then what happens Toba is the door is shut meaning is you're not forgiven Ibn Qayyim said وَتُغْلَقْ عَلَيْهِمْ أَبْوَابُهَا فِي الْغَالِبِ and he mentioned an important point this is the majority of the time غالب not always because we know that the one who makes Tawbah from a sin is like the one who has no sin. And Ibn al Qayyim mentioned the well known hadith that every Ummah, all of my Ummah is forgiven except the one who openly pronounces and uh, announces their sins. So again, think about this. And the issue of Tawbah, as the brother mentioned earlier, and inshallah we'll elaborate a bit here. As the brother mentioned earlier, Naam, Tawbah has conditions. From the conditions that they mentioned for Tawbah, and Nadam, that you regret sinning, al iqla you refrain from the action, al azam Allah Ya'ud, that you are determined never to return to that sin. But as for the one who repents from that sin and his intention is to return back to it, or back to it, and his tawbah is not accepted. We'll give an example. Somebody, he loves fornicating. And when he goes to prison, he's in the cell for one day, and he makes sure, oh Allah, forgive me for, for, forgive me for fornicating. But in his mind, and in his heart, is if he had the ability to fornicate, he would fornicate again. This tawbah is not accepted. This tawbah, is not accepted. Rather, he's playing games and he's wasting his time. Why? Because there wasn't a determination and there wasn't zeal to never return to that sin again. So, Toba is not, a, repenting is not a game, a game that we play. Now, we repent and we try to fulfill the conditions that are mentioned. Wallahi, we can go on and on and on and on. Ibn al Qayyim, the whole book is written concerning an individual. And we'll mention to you why was this book written? Because maybe it's a book that one day, inshallah ta'ala, somebody can sit down and go through the whole book. This book was written, as mentioned in the beginning, it was written when Sheikh al-Islam ibn al-Qayyim was asked concerning a person who has been trialed. 